wherever you're going to involve human beings and extraction of some natural resource, whether it's, it's a mineral or a living or whatever kind of resource, there has to be some sort of plan for long-term extraction. And the plan has to include uh, generational use of that resource. So if you're looking for the, for the resource to replace itself, as fisheries or, or um, terrestrial resources can do and must do, unlike a mineral resource that is finite, um, you're going to have to understand about the natural history of that resource. And so you've got to learn about it through research work before you start exploiting it. It's as simple as that. Before science named this prehistoric species Megalops atlanticus, Michelangelo dubbed it the Great Fish and painted it alongside Jonah on the Sistine Chapel five centuries ago. In modern times, the tarpon's metallic presence, majestic grace, and power earned it the moniker Silver King. A great fish indeed, prized by anglers, vital to economies, and essential to marine ecosystems. Join us as we explore their rich history and discover a priceless future for the tarpon of Boca Grande Pass. Education is a hallmark of the world's richest tarpon tournament mission and a responsibility Lou Hastings takes personally, dedicating himself and enlisting others to share his message. Education was key in putting it into our mission statement for the tournament. Um, we weren't going to bring the tournament back just for the tournament's sake or to make money. That wasn't the point. Education had to be a key component. So really, you should look at it as the tournament is a tool for us to be able to give that education or bring that education to the public. So why is this mission so important, and why now? Fishing tournaments are, are really public events, and even the non-fishing public comes down to tournament headquarters to see you know, the excitement and, and take part. And uh, when you have a tournament that's run in a kind of an irresponsible way from, a, from the standpoint of conservation, it sends the wrong message to, to our kids, really. That, that the message that gets sent is that it's okay to kill an animal for just for, for a cash prize. That's not the kind of thing that I think we should try to encourage uh, in, our, in, in, in the fishing community to, to be educating our youth with. Um, on the other hand, a fishing tournament that embraces the principles of conservation, uh, preserves the fun of the sport, and even um, benefits science uh, is something that can be a very powerful tool uh, in the community and, and even around the world because the media will often pick up on, on these events and write about them or show them on television and, and pretty soon your message gets around the world. More and more fishing tournaments have become family events, especially where they're, they're shore-based, so people have to come back every day and report their catch, whether it's handing a, re a release card or there's some measurement that needs to be obtained and the fish is released. The educational option, of course, has become more important nowadays, um, also because a lot more people take a lot more cameras on the boats with them. Uh, there's instant replay options, there's Facebook, there's the social media, you can really disseminate a lot more information nowadays than you ever could. And so it's become more important with so many more people watching to send the right message. Let's face it, without education, we will not get the message out. Education is key to this mission. An emphasis is placed on spending time with future environmental stewards by hosting presentations in local school systems. Here's where we can start. Let's start with the kids. Because ultimately, they will be in control of this environment. Let's arm them with all the tools that they need to know how to get that environment to a sustainable fishery. On this occasion at the Island School in Boca Grande, Lou joined the Shark Brothers, Sean and Brooks Paxton, to talk with students about tarpon and other important fish that share the waters of Charlotte Harbor and Boca Grande Pass. The great thing about Sean and Brooks Paxton is when I met them two years ago, they were already 
sending this message only about sharks, talking to kids, talking to communities. When I met them, I thought it was a fantastic way to reach people. Today at the Island School you know, on Boca Grande, uh, Sean and Brooks Paxton and I are going to be talking to kids from kindergarten through fifth grade. The great part also about today is we're using fun methods of teaching. Um, aligning ourselves with people like the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation, National Recording Artist Colton James, who wrote the song Save It for the Kids, Sean and Brooks Paxton, the Shark Brothers, we can get this done through an entertaining way rather than just straight academia. The young people are like sponges and they are absorbing all this information in a way that I never did when I was 8, 9, 10, 11 because there was no real concern a generation ago. And so that's why we need to put more emphasis into educating young people and it's very heartening to A, have that response, but B, know that through the educational process we've got a new generation of quite well-educated kids coming up who will take our place. Like Lou, the Paxtons never forget the positive influences they had growing up, so they appreciate every opportunity to spend a little extra time talking with students. We gotta save it for the kids.